My name is Gary Harrising, and I'm a commercial fisher in the Lower Lakes and Coorong fishery. Both my grandfathers were long-term fishers in the Lower Lakes and Coorong. One fished for 50 years and the other fished for 60 years. So <clears throat> all I can ever remember as a child and through my early teens is commercial fishing. I guess why I'm a commercial fisher today. When you live and breathe the environment on a daily basis, 24-7, you get to understand and you, be, and you begin to know what makes the region tick, what drives increased fish production, what drives the bird populations. And so after a while you get this, this very strong inner feeling about you know when things are going to bounce back, you know when things are going to improve because you've got river flows. And so you know within six to 12 months things are going to be much better. And the new catchphrase these days is what they call the Ackerman life low impact, fuel efficient, and our fishery is miles and miles in front of the big trawlers and the big fishing boats that chew up lots of fuel. I fished the same way my grandfather fished 100 years ago, except he used a rowing boat. I now use a boat that's got an outboard. All the nets 100 years ago were made of hemp net and cotton, and these days they're made of nylon or multi-filament. We still run the nets the same, they're static set nets. We set in a line of nets in the water, and hope the fish run into it and then in the mornings we pick them up and if there's fish in them we take the fish out. Really key part of using the type of gear that we use, it's very selective, it only targets the size of fish that we're after and there's minimal bycatch. So it's, it's a very efficient way to fish. Unfortunately in fishing there's no daily routine. Um, when you fish tides, you, they're all hours of the day and night. The summertime, the high tides are in the middle of the night, and during the winter, the high tides are in the middle of the day. And there's this transformation between summer and winter. Since the seals, New Zealand's first seals, have impacted on our fishery, um, all our old fishing methods have all been thrown out the window, and it's now catch fish while you can. You have to be in attendance, you've got to move, and the catches aren't as great as what they are, but the prices are, are reasonable, so one counteracts the other. But where I used to work 200 days a year to fish, I now work 300 days a year. Well, fundamentally, the fishery is environmentally driven. And so if you have good environmental cues, you've got good fish populations. If you've got good fish populations, then you have good catches. If you have good catches, you make money. Everybody's happy. I've got food on the table for kids. Bills get paid. Everyone's happy. The government gets their money for license fees, research, compliance. Everybody's happy when fishermen are making money. It's an important part of understanding that if you've got good fish populations, a healthy environment, you then have an economically healthy fishery. So I find it difficult um, to understand why people have this perception. They're very much influenced by the bad press and, and rightly so in some cases uh, of the way overfishing has happened in particularly in the Northern Hemisphere fisheries in Europe and in, also in Asia. But the Australian fisheries are, are very well managed and so there is absolutely no way with our precautionary principles and our very strict regulatory regime that commercial fishers could overfish. It is, it's, we are just so regulated. To me, the, probably the most significant milestone has been the fishery receiving Marine Stewardship Council certification. Um, it's been significant in the sense where it's created a social license for the fishery. It is someone, a third party audit outside of the fishery that says you are well managed and you're sustainable. It's not the government, it's not the industry saying we are sustainable and well managed, it's actually a third party that actually comes from London and says you guys are well managed and sustainable and it's a very rigorous and expensive process you have to go through and a lot of hurdles and hoops you have to jump through to get that certification process. But for me the benefit for the industry has been that it's gained a significant social licence to operate as commercial fishers. Social licence is the public accepting the fact I provide food for people to eat. And in South Australia, there is purportedly 270,000 recreational fishers. That means 
there's 1.2 million people that don't fish. And my job is to supply them with fresh fish. So uh, that to me is, is part of the key. And once people understand that process and that certification process, then people begin to um, appreciate whether you are sustainable and whether you are well managed. People like that reassurance that that's from a sustainable fishery, that's from a well managed fishery. And I think that that's what will happen over time. And, and the trend is already suggesting that. And I have an increasing number of customers that are prepared to pay a premium from a well managed and sustainable fishery. And in itself, that is a, a very strong message to the seafood industry. It's about supporting local industry, local jobs, and about supporting South Australian families. Because every fisher has a wife and kids at home. You know, we are just the same as any other family, any other person. We're not demons. And so it's really important, I think, to the future of this country, trying to understand and appreciate the commercial fishing sector of South Australia. Buy local seafood, support local industries, support local jobs. There are jobs at stake here.